Hi, it's Adrian here, and a quick shout out and thank you before we start with our guest today. This episode marks one year since we dropped our first here at Raising Me. Since then, we've gotten pro advice on everything from understanding and helping our kids with anxiety, money, regulating emotions, bullying, social media, disordered eating, and of course, trying to figure out what the heck they're saying with slang, and so much more. So with that, a big thank you. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for your support and for trusting us to help navigate some of those highs and lows. Now for today's topic, which is super timely, given that we are just weeks away from the upcoming election, it is navigating political division and all the political rhetoric, whether it's differing opinions in your own family and friends or heated conversations they're overhearing, or all the insanely negative ads out there right now. And of course, then there's what they're seeing and finding on social media. We're talking with Rebecca Hoffman today, a longtime family therapist, a regular guest here, and she is the director of Maine Health Center for Trauma, Resilience, and Innovation. There is so much to talk about from changing the conversations at home from the candidate really to values and why that is so incredibly important to deciphering sources, and the importance of setting boundaries, knowing when it is okay to walk away from a conversation to protect their peace. Ultimately, there are just a lot of life skill lessons that we can take away from this one. Check it out. Rebecca, this is kind of a tough one, right? Because politics are difficult to talk about just in general, it, it seems, because you just never know where somebody st- stands, especially in such a divisive um, environment right now. But, you know, let's talk about it when it comes to what our children are hearing, seeing, learning, and how to help them, them process. How do children typically pick up on political rhetoric? that they're hearing, you know, especially during a presidential election, which we're in the middle of right now. I would say, um, and what I would say first is it's different now than it was when, you know, we were children, right? Right. Where was it? You see it on the six o'clock news. Now it's a 24 hour news cycle. It's not just on a television. It's in your hand in social media, on the websites, everywhere you look. Such a good point. And it's much more aggressive. Right. Yes. There were really, I think people had much more mild conversations about politics and different sides. And now it's a lot of big emotions. And I think that's what kids are picking up on more than anything is strong, big emotions and very um, divided emotions, right? So somebody is either this or they're that. And that makes them either, quote, good or, quote, bad. And that's, that's what kids are hearing and seeing now, which is is confusing to them. How can we gauge, though, like what is appropriate for us to talk about with our kids? And I'm sure age is a big factor in that. Yes. Um, what I would say is that uh, what I often say is really determine what your family values are. And so rather than it being about a certain candidate, let's say, what are what are what are our family values and where do those values fall sort of on the political spectrum so rather than talking about any given candidate talking about you know as a family we believe in this and and then really help them understand that that's what we want to drive our decisions is what we believe is important are there things that are there certain parts of it that you should just avoid altogether, particularly with younger kids? Or should you just try and have an open, honest conversation, you know, regardless of age? I think what to avoid is what thinking, I mean, think about what we would want to avoid with kids about anything, which is being unkind, being mean, you know, making fun. Like, in general, we don't want kids to think that that's how we, we operate. We operate, yeah, right? Of course. So it would be the same thing in in politics. Is that um, these are the issues? This is what's important to us, um, but not this person is you know terrible or sort of whatever. taking the emotion out of it, maybe, right. and like try trying to speak in just fact 
fact-based. Right. Yeah. Fact-based. And when you say that, what's important is really thinking about the sources of information that are available to your children. If you have teenagers, they can find anything they want, right? Yes. But what do you have on for media at home? And and is it accurate information? And I know that's a very subjective question, but choosing the type of information that comes into your home and really trying to find accurate sources of information so that the conversations that you're having with your children are based on truth, not on arguments for one side or another. How do we set those healthy boundaries? I mean, obviously, yes, we can turn off the television in our home, but I I do think you mentioned teenagers and they're on their phones or they are, you know, on computers or whatever it might be. Like, how do we try to set those healthy boundaries on, on what they're consuming? I think it's important to teach them that not everything they hear is truth, right? Mm -hmm. And that's been hard, I think, for us as adults too, right? That that some of the information out there may not be accurate. And so we want to teach our teenagers to really dissect what they're hearing and determine the source and how accurate it is before they delve into reading and believing it. I think historically we used to be able to trust more that I mean, we didn't have all these websites and social media, so it was different, but we trusted that we were hearing or reading accurate sources, whether that's true or not, I, I don't know. But now I think it's important to teach kids how to really research and learn about a source. And, and again, this is life skills, right? before they make a judgment about what they're hearing. Well, I think the sources is key. And just as a you know, longtime journalist, we would always look for some to find something three times before we would even start to move forward with a story. And so, you know, if you just see like a headline and it's a one-off and nobody else has picked it up, that's a red flag. And, you know, I've talked to, to my daughter about it because she's you know more in that social and online space than the the younger the boys um but i think just you know there's also a saying in news like if your mother tells you she loves you check the sources right and so really having those conversations well where did you hear that right and where did you see that did you see it anywhere else right those did you kind- fact yes. check it? yes yeah and having those that's so important i i love that idea um even as a parent is you know, have you have have you seen it somewhere else? Three times, yeah, three three times. times. Sort of. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what about like, and we'll stick on this topic for a a little while too, because like, you know, teens are on social media. Like, how should we be worried about them sharing their political views on social? How do we help them navigate that? Like, that seems like that could be really tricky. Really tricky. And again, it, it's such this is such a microcosm of what we want to teach kids about how to be in the world, right? It's a great learning opportunity that just because they're seeing things that are unkind, it doesn't mean that that's how we want them to behave, right? If they can have passion about the issues that are at hand, right? And uh, the political issues and communicate their beliefs about that, that's great. And can they do it in a kind and respectful manner? Yeah. Expressing opinions in a healthy way. Yeah. Right. So what do we do is like, we can say that to them, but are there things that we can do for them to learn that? So I think, I think it's uh, an exploratory process as a parent to So let's say your child has posted something that is maybe funny about a candidate, but unkind is, you know, really showing them and like, how would you feel if somebody posted something like that about somebody you cared about or about you? How would you feel? And, and that links, I think we've dissected the political from the personal, um, in our lives recently. And so to reconnect that and say, like, these are actual people and no matter how we feel about them or their beliefs, they're still people. And we 
and our family believe in kindness. So we need to live our beliefs even when it comes to some something that we feel strongly about. How are there ways to tell if, you know, our, our child is feeling a little anxious or stressed about the political rhetoric rhetoric that they may be hearing? I mean, this is maybe applicable for, for parents, too, to self-reflect, like, oh, my gosh, I've got to turn off the TV. But are there signs we should be looking out for in our kids? Yes. Uh, what I would say is really what you said. Uh, first, self-reflection. Are we feeling anxious? Because if we're feeling anxious, our kids are seeing that. Um, I would almost, um, and I, I, this is new to this, these, I'd say past, you know, two or plus presidential elections is that your kids are probably anxious about it, especially the older they get, because there is so much emotion. There's so much angst behind all of it that, that I would just make the general assumption that for kids, it's either um, driving anxiety or making them confused or not really know what to feel about something. And so creating a safe, having your home be a safe environment to talk about those things is important. And that's where asking open-ended questions. So what are you hearing? What do you believe? What do you think is important for our president to teach America or to bring to like, you know, really bring it back down to the issues and the values and keep doing that and try to as much as we can, very hard to do, but keep the, all the negative, negative rhetoric out of the home as best you can. Yeah. No, no matter how passionate you feel, which again is so much easier said than done, especially in a very passionate uh, political climate right now. What about for parents or extended family, like where you have a political disagreement? Like, How do you navigate that in a healthy way in front of your children or with your children? I think the most important thing is to remember that your children are always watching and learning from you. And it is like any other disagreement in the home. How do you want your children to learn how to do disagreement? Do you want them to learn to spout off really negative things about somebody or something? Or do you want to try to have real conversations about real issues? And so it is just a laboratory for life, right? And it's a very charged laboratory for life right now. And so it's a really good opportunity to help kids learn what to do with big emotions, especially when they're facing someone who feels differently than them. So I take it as a really wonderful opportunity for kids to learn how to manage disagreement. I think about, because I've heard many, many stories where it's like, oh, we don't talk to uncle so-and-so during the political season. Like you also, how do you mend those gaps? Um, or still be able to see Uncle Ted <laughs> during the months of September, October, and sure. into November. That's a tough one because yeah. it might be that Uncle Ted can't engage in a conversation in a in a healthy manner. And if that's the case, then maybe we don't see Uncle Ted until December. And that's a good lesson for them too, is about setting boundaries. If there is somebody who can't engage in a healthy um, emotional manner, then what would we tell our kids? Don't engage with that person, right? If that person is unable to do that, then we say, okay, well, we, we're going to set space from that person. Um, easier said than done, right? There's holidays there. So Uncle Ted's going to be there. Sorry for the Uncle Ted. I know. Out there. I'm thinking, I feel <laughs> terrible if anybody listening is named Ted, right. but it could be Susie Q or exactly. Sarah or you know right. anybody. But you, I think we've all had it in our families, especially in the last several election cycles. Absolutely. I think a way to start is to really again focus on the issues, not the candidates or the people. So what are what's important to each person and how can we have a healthy disagreement? Disagreement isn't necessarily bad, right? Um, it's how can we how can we disagree in a healthy manner? And again, 
teaching kids if if the other person isn't able to do that, it's okay to set a boundary and say, we're not going to talk about this because we can't do it in a way that's healthy. And teaching kids, it is okay to set a boundary when someone is not able to be kind and respectful. Which is such a great lesson just through life. It is escalated during the political season, but boy, what a great gift to be able to teach kids boundaries uh, at any age. Absolutely. It's something so many adults struggle with through our whole lives. Yes. Yes. And especially, as you mentioned, uncle or aunt or whoever, (laughs) with family, we are not very good at teaching kids boundaries. You know, just even that idea, this is going off track, but like, you know, give Aunt Aunt Susie a kiss, give Aunt Susie a hug. What if that child doesn't want to do that? We're we're teaching them that that boundary is not okay. To ignore their instinct. Ignore their instinct. So we have to let kids have their instincts and 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 listen and lean into their instincts. It's true with this too, that if they don't want to engage in a conversation or we as adults don't want to, that is okay. And we can set that boundary and say, I mean, it's true even in marriages, there's disagreement in beliefs. You know, they have to decide whether that's just going to, going to be a topic that doesn't get touched yeah, or whether they want to try to talk through that. With, with or without the kids. Right. You know, that's, right. that's tricky. And the reality is, is like the election cycle is only a small part of politics. Right. So like, how do we teach kids that this really politics, government, civics, just a, it's a really important part of our lives. It is. It is. And I think we've lost that. It's become about the candidates. It hasn't become, it hasn't been about civics. and. And so again, it's a it's a learning opportunity always, right? To teach kids how to put civics into action. How do we? What do we feel is important, and how are we going to um, voice that or make more of that happen, right? So teaching them how to use their words to invoke change, right? Um, whether it's volunteering at a you know a political event or a rally or whatever it might be, you can teach them that their voice has meaning. It's also important. It's an important opportunity to teach kids about our history and even the hard parts and the not so good parts of our history that we don't always talk about. The ways in which our country has maybe failed a certain population or has made choices that had negative outcomes that they didn't expect, um, that, that, that there are going to be mistakes and there are going to be lessons learned. And how do we bring those lessons learned into the decisions that we make now? And approach it with empathy. Right. Too. Right. Why is empathy so important when we're talking about politics, when we're learning about politics? Maybe it is part of it that we all make mistakes and understanding that that is part of the process sometimes. Yes. So one of the things that I think is fascinating that's happened is that these candidates have become almost portrayed not as the people they are, but sort of they represent this, you know, this side of politics. Mm -hmm. And so it's easy to remove empathy from yourself when you're not looking at a person or a set of people that are making really hard decisions. And so the more we can we can say, you know, these are people that have difficult decisions to make and we may not agree with the decisions that they make, but they are people who are grappling with difficult things. So like you said, bringing empathy into into it and it's really been pulled out, I think, in general from the political discussions in in our country. So bringing it back in is a great uh, suggestion. I can't help but think like social media really has plays a part in that though. It does. It's, um, I mean, just it's social media is sort of faceless, right? Anybody you can, can hide anything. behind the keyboard, whether that's your picture or not, whether it's your name or not by the profile, you can hide behind the keyboard. Exactly. And every, we all know that people can get, they say oh, much nasty. more aggressive oh, things, my gosh, right? It's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. So social media is a big player when it comes to um, sort of 
a lot of the discussions that we're we're hearing Absolutely. right now. Absolutely. And they and and helping kids learn the the places on social media where good conversations are happening versus the places that are more, you know, anonymous and aggressive and mean. And so how can they find the places that are a little more real and positive? What would you suggest a dinner time conversation look like right now around the family table when it comes to the presidential election is everywhere right now? You know, I will say we don't talk politics a lot in my house, mostly because as a journalist, I was very cautious about sharing my political views. It's not that they we don't discuss them, but you know, what kinds of conversations should we be having right now sitting around the din- dinner table with our kids? I think the most beautiful thing to do at the dinner table would be to pose questions to your children. Oh. So, you know, what are you hearing in school or amongst your friends about the presidential election? What what types of things are you hearing? How do you feel about that? What do you think? Um, What would you like to know more about? How do you think we as a family should handle some of these difficult things? Again, kids of different ages, you would do this differently, but not to open up with opinions, but to open up with questions. I love that. Yeah, I, I do love that. And I think, you know, I think I would be surprised what my middle schooler is here. I've kind of assumed he like he doesn't have a phone. He's yet he's not really engaged, but I have a feeling I'd be surprised what would come out of his mouth. And really my daughter too, you know? So it, different ages, different discussions. So what what kind of discussion then do you have with, you know, my youngest is six. Are we having that discussion? I would be very curious what your six-year-old Yeah, just out of curiosity, right? Right. right. Just out of curiosity, what do they understand about what's going on right now in our world? It for younger kids, it may be very scary, right? All this aggressive big energy, they may not understand why it's going on or what to do about it, or they may be completely oblivious to it, which would be great. Would be great, right? Um, Protect that bubble. Yes, protect the bubble. Um, but again, asking those questions and helping to guide the conversation in a way that um, still holds those family family values. So respectful disagreement or sharing opinions in a respectful way, being open to other opinions. You know, the, the things we want to teach our kids anyway, anyway. is so. Like this is like the this. perfect time to have some of those conversations because there's a there's a trigger point for it. There's a trigger point and there's big feelings. And so it is the perfect learning opportunity for kids to manage, to learn how to manage that and to think and speak for themselves in a way that's kind and respectful and with empathy. If there was one takeaway as we're getting into the heat of the election cycle, what what would that be? The one takeaway I would say is to... Try to bring our kids back to either our traditional goals as a country for democracy, teaching them about that, or our family values and always infusing those into our thoughts and conversations. And so we need to help our kids separate out all the negative rhetoric from how they feel, believe, and how they speak about it. Even if they're hearing so much negative, how do they stay true to being kind and empathic right now? Yeah, awesome, great advice. Rebecca, thank you so much. We'll have more resources on wgme.com slash raising me. Always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Well, a lot of things to think about with this one, really, though a few things that stuck out with me after speaking with Rebecca. First, as we all know, right now, politics, it's hard to avoid. They are intense and it is everywhere. It seems also, you know, to Rebecca's point, and I agree, it's a lot more aggressive and personal than when we were kids. Plus, it's everywhere, like not just the daily newspaper headline or catching the latest on the six o'clock news. Social media means you can find it almost anytime and anywhere. And it is big emotions, which can be confusing or 
make kids anxious. Heck, it makes a lot of us adults anxious listening to it all. Ultimately, the simple understanding that things are much different now can go a long way. Just be ready to talk about it and allow our kids to share their feelings and ask questions. And of course, we can do our best to speak in facts rather than adding our own big emotions to it all. The other thing that I took away is the importance of focusing on and identifying values rather than the candidate. Instead of making politics all about the person or a party, connect the discussion to family values that, you know, say this candidate aligns with the topics that are really important to me and that's why I'm supporting them, which can also help kids understand politics beyond the, you know, us versus them mentality and hopefully, hopefully anyway, lead to more respectful conversations even when they don't agree. And then these, which are just frankly great life skills, setting healthy boundaries and critical thinking. It is good to remind the kids it's okay to step away from a conversation if it is not respectful. And that it is insanely important to think about where information is coming from, especially online right now. Check those sources, trust, but perhaps more importantly, verify as we say about sources in the news. And of course, Rebecca said it best, this is all just a great laboratory for life right now. Thank you so much for listening to Raising Me. I'm Adrian Stein. This episode is edited by Megan Littlefield and produced with Nate Eldred. Please follow Raising Me wherever you get your podcasts. And of course, if you'll consider a positive rating and review so others can find this message, we greatly appreciate that. Wherever you are, I hope you learned something new and get to take a little time for you. <laughs>